So my talk is grounded in this idea that rarely do elements of a landscape, either built or natural, exist in ecological isolation. And although long recognized, I think this idea is particularly salient when we're talking about agricultural ecosystems. But before we get there, I want to talk about one of my favorite inhabitants of these agricultural ecosystems, bees. Um, but rather than belabor the importance of bees to crop yields to this room, I just want to kind of show this smorgasbord of food that maybe the next time you enjoy something like this, you might think of a bee, bird, or butterfly, or even a bat. Pollinators are important. They're also threatened. And there's a suite of drivers that I think threaten these um, important pollinators. And I would argue that they operate at two distinct scales. So at landscape scales, we see that the pattern of habitat patches um, in these landscapes can control the distribution of food, nest, and, uh, or the flow of parasites and pathogens. Then at farm scales, management decisions could influence, uh, say, a bee's exposure to pesticides. And ecologists have recognized that these two scales probably don't exist in isolation and that they interact. So with that in mind, we set out to ask three questions, specifically, separately, does landscape pattern and farm management influence native bee communities and the pollination service they provide? But then what about this interaction? Is the effect of farm management on bee communities and pollination services modified by landscape pattern? So methods, really quickly. We measure uh, pollination services, the abundance and diversity of native bees at 15 blueberry farms in Vermont. We characterize landscape pattern at two spatial scales using GIS, and we create this agricultural intensity index through farmer surveys. So to that first question, um, here we're looking at the proportion natural area on the X and visitation rate, our measure of ecosystem service supply on the Y, and we're seeing that as farms increase in the amount of natural area around them, they benefit from more pollination. Uh, and this relationship also holds true for the abundance and biodiversity of bees. So how about management? Well, we see a similar relationship whereby farms with less intensive management benefit from greater ecosystem service supply and have more robust bee communities. But how about the interaction there? That's what I'm really excited to talk about today. So in this next figure, um, I'm going to put these two gradients on independent axes and I'm going to show values that come from a model with a management landscape pattern interaction term in them. Um, and so we can see here that you have areas of red, low predicted visitation, and areas of yellow, high predicted visitation. And as you increase in the amount of natural area in the landscape, you can see that the effect of management, that agricultural intensity, isn't as pronounced. But in these areas where you have not a lot of natural area, management really matters. And this relationship, again, holds true for the abundance and biodiversity of bees. So farm management and landscape pattern interact such that the negative effects of intensive agriculture are compounded by landscape simplification. So no farm is an island. Landscapes with more natural areas support robust bee population. Farm management matters too. And their interaction suggests that management actions taken at the farm scale could be reinforced by landscape planning at broader spatial scales. Thanks for listening. You might have a couple questions regarding this talk, and I'd be happy to answer them during the break. Thanks.